The use of forced labor and slavery in Nazi Germany and throughout German-occupied Europe during World War II took place on an unprecedented scale. It was a vital part of the German economic exploitation of conquered territories. It also contributed to the mass extermination of populations in German-occupied Europe. The Nazi Germans abducted approximately 12 million people from almost 20 European countries, about two-thirds came from Central Europe and Eastern Europe. Many workers died as a result of their living conditions, mistreatment, malnutrition, and torture were the main causes of death. They became civilian casualties of shelling. At its peak the forced laborers comprised 20% of the German workforce. Counting deaths and turnover, about 15 million men and women were forced laborers at one point during the war. The defeat of Nazi Germany in 1945 freed approximately 11 million foreigners, categorized as displaced persons, most of whom were forced laborers and POWs. In wartime, the German forces had brought into the Reich 6.5 million civilians in addition to Soviet POWs for unfree labor in factories. Returning them home was a high priority for the Allies. However, in the case of citizens of the USSR, returning often meant suspicion of collaboration or the Gulag. The United Nations Relief and Rehabilitation Administration UNRRA, Red Cross, and military operations provided food, clothing, shelter, and assistance in returning home. In all, 5.2 million foreign workers and POWs were repatriated to the Soviet Union, 1.6 million to Poland, 1.5 million to France, and 900,000 to Italy, along with 300,000 to 400,000 each to Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, the Netherlands, Hungary, and Belgium. Topic: Forced workers. Hitler's policy of Lebensraum, room for living, strongly emphasized the conquest of new lands in the East, known as General Plan Ost, and the exploitation of these lands to provide cheap goods and labor for Germany. Even before the war, Nazi Germany maintained a supply of slave labor. This practice started from the early days of labor camps of undesirable elements, German, unzuvelassig elemente, such as the homeless, homosexuals, criminals, political dissidents, communists, Jews, and anyone whom the regime wanted out of the way. During World War II the Nazis operated several categories of Arbeitslager labor camps for different categories of inmates. Prisoners in Nazi labor camps were worked to death on short rations and in bad conditions, or killed if they became unable to work. Many died as a direct result of forced labor under the Nazis. After the invasion of Poland, Polish Jews over the age of 12 and Poles over the age of 12 living in the general government were subject to forced labor. Historian Jan Gross estimates that no more than 15% of Polish workers volunteered to go to work in Germany. In 1942, all non-Germans living in the general government were subject to forced labor. The largest number of labor camps held civilians forcibly abducted in the occupied countries to provide labor in the German war industry, repair bombed railroads and bridges, or work on farms. <laughs> 
Manual labor was a resource in high demand, as much of the work that today would be done with machines was still a manual affair in the 1930s and 1940s, shoveling, material handling, machining, and many others. As the war progressed, the use of slave labor increased massively. Prisoners of war and civilian undesirables were brought in from occupied territories. Millions of Jews, Slavs and other conquered peoples were used as slave laborers by German corporations, such as Thyssen, Krupp, IG Farben, Bosch, Daimler-Benz, Demag, Henschel, Junkers, Messerschmitt, Siemens, and even Volkswagen, not to mention the German subsidiaries of foreign firms, such as Fordwork a subsidiary of the Ford Motor Company and Adam Opel AG a subsidiary of General Motors among others. Once the war had begun, the foreign subsidiaries were seized and nationalized by the Nazi-controlled German state, and work conditions there deteriorated as they did throughout German industry. About 12 million forced laborers, most of whom were Eastern Europeans, were employed in the German war economy inside Nazi Germany throughout the war. The German need for slave labor grew to the point that even children were kidnapped to work in an operation called the HEU Action. More than 2,000 German companies profited from slave labor during the Nazi era, including Deutsche Bank and Siemens. Topic: <laughs> Classifications. A class system was created amongst Fremdarbeiter foreign workers, brought to Germany to work for the Reich. The system was based on layers of increasingly less privileged workers, starting with well-paid workers from Germany's allies or neutral countries to forced laborers from conquered Untermenschen subhumans populations. Gastarbeitnehmer guest workers workers from Germanic and Scandinavian countries France Italy other German allies Romania Bulgaria Hungary and friendly neutrals e.g. Spain and Switzerland this was a very small group, only about 1% of foreign workers in Germany came from countries that were neutral or allied to Germany Zwangsarbeiter forced workers forced laborers from countries not allied with Germany This class of workers was broken down into the following designations Militärinternierte military internees prisoners of war Geneva Conventions allowed captor nations to force non-officer prisoners of war to work within certain restrictions for example, almost all Polish non-officer prisoners of war c. were forced to work in Nazi Germany. In 1944, there were almost 2 million prisoners of war employed as forced laborers in Germany. Compared to other foreign workers, the prisoners of war were relatively well off, especially if they came from Western countries that were still at war like the United States or Britain, as the minimum standards of their treatment were mandated by the Geneva Conventions, their working conditions and well-being were subject to supervision by the International Red Cross and, in cases of mistreatment, retaliation against German prisoners held in the US, Britain and Canada who were performing similar forced labor was almost certain. However, the treatment of these workers varied greatly depending on their country of origin, the period, and the specific workplace. <laughs> 
In particular, Soviet prisoners of war were treated with utter brutality as Nazis did not consider them subject to protection under the Geneva Conventions, which had not been ratified nor implemented by the Soviet Union. Moreover, the Germans did not expect that their own prisoners in Soviet captivity would receive good treatment under any circumstances. Zivilarbeiter civilian workers", ethnic Poles from the general government. They were regulated by strict Polish decrees, they received much lower wages and could not use conveniences such as public transport, or visit many public spaces and businesses for example they could not visit German church services, swimming pools, or restaurants, they had to work longer hours and were assigned smaller food rations, they were subject to a curfew. Poles were routinely denied holidays and had to work seven days a week, they could not enter marriage between themselves without a permit, they could not possess money or objects of value, bicycles, cameras, or even lighters. They were required to wear a sign, the Polish P, on their clothing. In 1939 there were about 300,000 Polish Zivilarbeiter in Germany. By 1944, their number skyrocketed to about 1.7 million, or 2.8 million by different accounts approximately 10% of occupied Poland's prisoner workforce. In 1944, there were about 7.6 million foreign so called civilian workers employed in Germany in total, including POWs from general government and the expanded USSR, with and a similar number of workers in this category from other countries. Ostarbeiter, Eastern workers. Soviet and Polish civil workers rounded up primarily in District Galizian and in Reichskommissariat Ukraine. They were marked with a sign Ost East", had to live in camps that were fenced with barbed wire and under guard, and were particularly exposed to the arbitrariness of the Gestapo and the industrial plant guards. Estimates put the number of Ost Arbeiters between 3 million and 5.5 million. In general, foreign laborers from Western Europe had similar gross earnings and were subject to similar taxation as German workers. In contrast, the Central and Eastern European forced laborers received at most about one half the gross earnings paid to German workers and much fewer social benefits. Forced laborers who were prisoners of labor or concentration camps received little if any wage and benefits. The deficiency in net earnings of Central and Eastern European forced laborers versus forced laborers from Western countries is illustrated by the wage savings forced laborers were able to transfer to their families at home or abroad see table. The Nazis issued a ban on sexual relations between Germans and foreign workers. Repeated efforts were made to propagate Volkstum racial consciousness to prevent such relations. Pamphlets, for instance, instructed all German women to avoid physical contact with all foreign workers brought to Germany as a danger to their blood. Women who disobeyed were imprisoned. Even fraternization with the workers was regarded as dangerous, and targeted with pamphlet campaigns in 1940–1942. The soldiers in the Wehrmacht and SS officers were exempt from any such restrictions. It is estimated that at least 34,140 Eastern European women apprehended in Lepanka's military kidnapping raids, were forced to serve them as «sex slaves» in German military brothels and camp brothels during the Third Reich. <laughs> 
In Warsaw alone, there were five such establishments set up under military guard in September 1942, with over 20 rooms each. Alcohol was not allowed in there, unlike on the Western Front, and the victims underwent genital checkups once a week. Numbers In the late summer of 1944, German records listed 7.6 million foreign civilian workers and prisoners of war in the German territory, most of whom had been brought there by coercion. By 1944, slave labor made up one quarter of Germany's entire workforce, and the majority of German factories had a contingent of prisoners. The Nazis also had plans for the deportation and enslavement of 50% of Britain's adult male population in the event of a successful invasion. Topic: Organization Tote. The Organization Tote was a Nazi-era civil and military engineering group in Nazi Germany, eponymously named for its founder Fritz Tote, an engineer and senior Nazi figure. The organization was responsible for a huge range of engineering projects both in pre-World War II Germany, and in all of occupied Europe from France to Russia. Tote became notorious for using forced labor. Most of the so-called «volunteer» Soviet POW workers were assigned to the organization Tote. The history of the organization falls into three main phases. A pre-war period between 1933 and 1938, during which the predecessor of Organisation Tote, the Office of General Inspector of German Roadways General Inspector für das Deutsche Strahlenwesen, was primarily responsible for the construction of the German Autobahn network. The organization was able to draw on conscripted, i.e., compulsory labor from within Germany through the Reich Labor Service (Reichsarbeitsdienst, RAD). The period from 1938 until 1942 after Operation Barbarossa, when the organization Tote proper was founded and utilized on the Eastern Front. The huge increase in the demand for labor created by the various military and paramilitary projects was met by a series of expansions of the laws on compulsory service, which ultimately obligated all Germans to arbitrarily determined i.e. effectively unlimited compulsory labor for the state, Zwangserbiet. From 1938 to 40, over 1.75 million Germans were conscripted into labor service. From 1940 to 42, Organisation Tote began its reliance on Gastarbeitnehmer guest workers, Militärinternierte military internees, Zivilarbeiter civilian workers, Ostarbeiter eastern workers, and Hilfswillage volunteer POW workers the period from 1942 until the end of the war with approximately 1.4 million laborers in the service of the organization tote overall 1% were germans rejected from military service and 1.5% were concentration camp prisoners the rest were prisoners of war and compulsory laborers from occupied countries all were effectively treated as slaves and existed in the complete and arbitrary service of a ruthless totalitarian state Many did not survive the work or the war. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Extermination through labor. <inaudible> 
Millions of Jews were forced laborers in ghettos, before they were shipped off to extermination camps. The Nazis also operated concentration camps, some of which provided free forced labor for industrial and other jobs while others existed purely for the extermination of their inmates. To mislead the victims, at the entrances to a number of camps the lie, "'Work brings freedom' Arbeit matched frei was placed, to encourage the false impression that cooperation would earn release. A notable example of labor concentration camp is the Mittelbau Dora labor camp complex that serviced the production of the V-2 rocket. Extermination through labor was a Nazi German World War II principle that regulated the aims and purposes of most of their labor and concentration camps. The rule demanded that the inmates of German World War II camps be forced to work for the German war industry with only basic tools and minimal food rations until totally exhausted. Topic. Controversy over compensation To facilitate the economy after the war, certain categories of the victims of Nazism were excluded from compensation from the German government, those were the groups with the least amount of political pressure they could have brought to bear, and many forced laborers from the Eastern Europe fall into that category. There has been little initiative on the part of the German government or business to compensate the forced labourers from the war period, as stated in the London Debt Agreement of 1953. Consideration of claims arising out of the Second World War by countries which were at war with or were occupied by Germany during that war, and by nationals of such countries, against the Reich and agencies of the Reich, including costs of German occupation, credits acquired during occupation on clearing accounts, and claims against the Reichskreditkassen shall be deferred until the final settlement of the problem of reparations. To this date, there are arguments that such settlement has never been fully carried out and that Germany post-war development has been greatly aided, while the development of victim countries stalled. A prominent example of a group which received almost no compensation for their time as forced laborer in Nazi Germany are the Polish forced laborers. According to the Potsdam Agreements of 1945, the Poles were to receive reparations not from Germany itself, but from the Soviet Union share of those reparations. Due to the Soviet pressure on the Polish Communist government, the Poles agreed to a system of repayment that de facto meant that few Polish victims received any sort of adequate compensation comparable to the victims in Western Europe. Europe or Soviet Union itself. Most of the Polish share of reparations was given to Poland by Soviet Union under the Comic-Con framework, which was not only highly inefficient, but benefited Soviet Union much more than Poland. Under further Soviet pressure related to the London Agreement on German external debts, in 1953 the People's Republic of Poland renounced its right to further claims of reparations from the successor states of Nazi Germany. Only after the fall of communism in Poland in 1989–1990 did the Polish government try to renegotiate the issue of reparations, but found little support in this from the German side and none from the Soviet later, Russian side. The total number of forced laborers under Nazi rule who were still alive as of August 1999 was 2.3 million.
The German Forced Labour Compensation Program was established in 2000. A forced labour fund paid out more than 4.37 billion euros to close to 1.7 million of then living victims around the world. One off payments of between 2,500 and 7,500 euros. Germany Chancellor Angela Merkel stated in 2007 that, "...many former forced labourers have finally received the promised humanitarian aid." She also conceded that before the fund was established nothing had gone directly to the forced labourers. German President Horst Kohler stated, it was an initiative that was urgently needed along the journey to peace and reconciliation. At least, with these symbolic payments, the suffering of the victims has been publicly acknowledged after decades of being forgotten. See also Hunger Plan – The seizure of food from the occupied Soviet Union Fritz Sockel Arbeitseinsatz – Forced labor deployment. Totaleinsatz – A colloquial term used for a subset of the Arbeitseinsatz program concerning 400,000 Czechs Polnischer Bodienst im General Government, Polish Construction Service in the General Government, Service du Travail Obligatoire, STO, Compulsory Work Service in Vichy France, Italian Military Internees, Kidnapping of Polish children by Nazi Germany. Sexual enslavement by Nazi Germany in World War II Deutsche Wirtschaftsbetrieb DWB, German Economic Enterprises List of German private companies that exploited slave labor from the Natzweiler Struthof concentration camps Employment of Germans as forced laborers by the Allied powers after World War II